Zimbabwean investigative journalist Hopwell Chinono and opposition party leader Jacob Ngarivumwe are to remain behind bars after the High Court delayed delivering its judgment. The pair who were denied bail by a lower court are facing charges of inciting public violence related to anti-corruption protests that were scheduled for last Friday. The state argued against the appeal, claiming that the reporter and the politician were flight risks. They were arrested three weeks ago in Harare. Hopal Chinono and Jacob Ngarivume will wait a few more days before learning their fate. The pair appeared separately in the Zimbabwe High Court to appeal their bail being denied last week. The state insists that the duo are not good candidates of bail, while the defense argued there was no evidence their clients would abscond. Uh, the bail appeal has been argued, despite the state only filing its response today. The judge ordered that the matter be heard. It's been argued. The judge says it's a matter which requires him to write a full judgment and that he can only be ready with the judgment on the 6th, which is Thursday. On Friday, at least six known persons were arrested after staging protests in Harare and Bulawayo. The planned national demonstration was curbed by heavy police presence and strict COVID-19 regulations. Amnesty International says government is using the coronavirus pandemic as a pretext for restricting human rights. What we're seeing in Zimbabwe is an intensification of a crackdown against dissenting voice. The arrest of Hopo Chimono and Jacob Garivume on 20th of July was the crescendo to the crackdown that has been happening in Zimbabwe. We are calling on the Zimbabwean authorities to stop attacking people for protesting. These people were peacefully protesting and they were arrested and we have heard that some of them were tortured. We're calling on the Zimbabwean government to stop. The heavy-handedness and crackdown on alleged dissidents is due to the pressure government is feeling from its citizens. According to one analyst, the regime recognizes its shortcomings but doesn't have the solutions to the myriad of problems facing the country. The government recognizes that the people of Zimbabwe are very angry, that the people are exasperated, they want change, but unfortunately the government is unable to deliver that change. What we see is a government that is now relying more on coercion, on force, as opposed to reliance on consent, which all democratic governments must do. Unfortunately, the government's reliance on the instruments of force will come back to bite it in the not too distant future. Shinono and Garivome were arrested based on their tweets promoting the July 31st demonstrations. And ironically, support for the pair and other arrested activists online has grown immensely, spilling outside its borders. Citizens from neighboring countries such as South Africa and Botswana are using their social media accounts to call on the Sadiq region to investigate the alleged human rights violations. The chorus from Twitter, Facebook and even on Instagram is that Zimbabwean lives matter too. Norma Polani, SABC News. Well, to give us a human rights and rule of law perspective in Zimbabwe, we're now joined via Zoom by Washington Katema, who's the programs manager at the Southern Africa Human Rights Defenders Network. Thanks so much indeed for joining us, Washington. Welcome to the program. Uh, thanks, Peter. Um, thanks for hosting us. All right. So your organization has been working with uh, uh, human rights defenders on the ground in Zimbabwe. What have you been seeing, sensing and uh, gathering in terms of uh, the situation in the country? Well, thanks for that, uh, Peter. We have been observing that the human rights situation is drastically deteriorated in the past uh, few days. Uh, we have witnessed and observed and also heard of many uh, human rights violations uh, cases. Um, I think on the uh, 31st of July, uh, more than 18 um, democracy activists and human rights defenders were arrested uh, throughout the country, uh, and eight were abducted, including uh, Tawanda Nchiehiewa from Blueo and also Otilia Swanda from Blueo. We had also an abduction case in, in Marondera uh, at Hopley Farm, just on the outskirts of Harare, and uh, also in Mashingo, 
So we have uh, seen a, 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 a drastic uptick in the cases of human rights violations in, in Zimbabwe. Do you and know... Increased militarization of uh, not only the political space, but also uh, of key institutions, and as well as weaponization of, of law to uh, silent dissent in, in Zimbabwe. All right, we'll talk about the law just now, but I'm just wondering, you've talked about abductions. We've seen pictures and videos on social media of people uh, who say they were tortured. Do we know who's doing these abductions and torturing? Uh, it should be the, the state has got a responsibility to protect. And if there are allegations of abductions, of torture, especially with regards to uh, police brutality, the state has got the constitutional responsibility uh, to do the investigations. And uh, all leads points to the role of the state in, in, in the abductions. And we need to situate this within its proper context. I think uh, pre-independence, we experienced what I would call militarization of politics. And post-independence, instead of having post-independent demilitarization of politics, we saw increased uh, role of military in, in, in politics. And, you know, when the military is involved in, in civilian spaces or in civic spaces, uh, it's more of commandist type of politics and commandist type of, of systems. And we've been witnessing uh, human rights violations primarily because of increased visibility, increased role of military in political affairs. Is the Zimbabwean government, and we're talking about law now, is the Zimbabwean government breaking its own laws or are its laws, the ones that they're using, in contradiction with international law, which, which might be more common practice? Yeah, instead of uh, promoting a rule of law, we have experienced this rising phenomenon of rule by law. Uh, weaponization of law to uh, close the civic space in, in Zimbabwe, weaponization of law to silent uh, human rights defenders in Zimbabwe, weaponization of law to uh, dismantle the democratic uh, opposition in, in Zimbabwe. So the the, 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 uh, the Arara administration has refashioned uh, dictatorship not only for the democratic age but also for the COVID-19 uh, era. They've uh, done whatever they are doing in terms of violating uh, human rights under the pretext of uh, COVID-19 um, uh, regulations. But there's been a disproportionate response from, from the state, which is very paranoid and which uh, doesn't uh, trust the citizens. And there's that breakdown of the social contract, and there's a clear departure from a productive social contract to a more cohesive uh, social contract between the state and the citizens. So the, the, that's the current situation uh, in Zimbabwe right now. Do some of these human rights abuses predate COVID-19? You're saying that they're using COVID-19 as a cover, but before COVID-19, were some of the things that you're describing happening? Yes, so they're using the COVID-19 to legitimize some of the things they've been doing all the time, since time immemorial. But now they're doing this under the, the, the framework of our COVID uh, regulations. So this is just trying to hide behind their finger. This is uh, the ZANPF Lagos pre-independence, post-independence. We saw what happened in Matebele land. Um, and we have many leading journalists uh, who are still in hiding, like Mududus Matutu. And his main, main only crime is that he is the, 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 the journalist who exposed uh, government corruption with regards to procurement of COVID-19 related uh, equipment and medicines. And now he's living like a rat, uh, hiding from his own government simply because he was some kind of a whistleblower. So this has been the situation in Zimbabwe. We don't know where Itai Zamara is today, up to today. And the, the same could happen to all those who are demanding accountable governance. So Zimbabwe has been a competitive authoritarian regime for some time. And there is now a real risk that it might actually become an electoral military dictatorship where the military holds uh, disproportionate power with regards to state of affairs. Is there some international law that Zimbabweans who are victim of this uh, human rights abuses can go for recourse, an international body that they can say, 
look, our government is breaking the law, we're being abused, uh, please give us some relief. Yeah, Zimbabwe is part two social and people, uh, on, on uh, political, uh, civil and political rights. Uh, and uh, we've got UN me the special mechanisms, uh, like uh, special rapporteur on the situation of human rights uh, defenders. Uh, we've also a special mechanism or um, a mandate holder on freedom of expression. And oh, even at, at uh, the AU level, there is also uh, a special rapporteur on, on, on human rights defenders. And the citizens uh, can utilize some of these platforms to increase pressure on the RRA administration so that they implement the latent spirit of the 2013 constitution. They, the baseline is, is there, the baseline is, is clear that they just need to implement and not amend uh, the constitution. And also under the responsibility to protect, especially with regards to egregious human rights violations in Zimbabwe, uh, many countries can uh, utilize their mechanisms to uh, give voice to Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe is in the diaspora to raise some of these uh, issues. And some of these issues can actually be had in, in extrajudicial, uh, extraterritorial uh, uh, landscapes with regards especially to, to human rights violations. In Zimbabwe itself, are the courts helping the citizens or are they sometimes complicit with the authorities? Uh, the, the challenge is that there's been a political uh, persecution through judicial prosecution. So they, there's this judicial persecution uh, to the extent that at times the, the courts have become the enablers for the, for the regime instead of protecting the constitution and protecting the citizens. Because it's all about the citizens. The court has been uh, duplicitous in some of its conduct with regards to implementing the letter and spirit of the constitution and also with regards to uh, observing the rule of law. I'm just trying to to see where there could be hope for citizens at this stage. Um, we hear the opposition often speaking, saying that, uh, you know, they'll do the best they can. But if what we're seeing, this environment, this current environment, where um, anyone who's perceived to be speaking out against government gets arrested, um, from where you're standing, what what where will it end uh that, that is the, the the challenge in zimbabwe with regards to what's what's the end game what's the the, the escape trajectory for the people of zimbabwe we have been living uh, through a human political crisis for, for for some time i think the power lies in the in the people it's all about the people power uh, and citizens needs to build on their agents to demand accountability and not only to wait for an election period for them to demand accountability, but to take a short route to accountability, which is demanding accountability on a day-to-day -day basis and also building a critical mass of active citizens who always speak truth to power, but see there's comfort in numbers and there's need also to move from tweets to the streets, uh, but complying with the constitutional provisions with regards to exercise of the right to protest under section 59 of the 2013 constitution. So it's all about the citizens, it's all about the people of Zimbabwe setting themselves free. The region, South Africa in particular, can play a key role in creating an enabling framework for citizens in Zimbabwe to be able to exercise their agents and determine their own destiny as a collective. And uh, we want South Africa to move from uh, the failed quiet diplomacy uh, policy uh, position, especially with regards to Zimbabwe, and to be firm positions with their counterparts in Harare, that this is conduct uh, government business in a democratic age or in the 21st century, uh, outplaying opposition, closing civic space, criminalizing journalism. That's not uh, the way to, to do, especially during this agent either. Do you know for sure if authorities are torturing uh, arrested people in uh, custody? Please come again, Peter. I was just saying, do you know with certainty if authorities are torturing people in 
custody. This is an allegation that keeps coming up on social media. Often these abductions happen in unmarked cars, people wearing plain clothes. And so there's been a challenge in connecting these people to the authorities. Have you been able to make that connection? Uh, we haven't been able to establish, like, uh, with clear evidence, best the, 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 the culprits. But like I've said before, it, it is the responsibility of the state to protect its uh, citizens. And we've been seeing the state failing to protect uh, the citizens. And the women activists have been at the receiving end. You see, the three uh, MDC Alliance uh, female leaders were arrested, abducted in, in, uh, in May 2020. And we have a case of even uh, Namatai Pepeza, who has been like speaking against the amendment of the constitution, facing countless arrests. Uh, the case of Tandekile Moyo, who's amplified and bullhorn must for uh, hashtag. She has been living in constant fear, uh, in constant fear of the state, not constant fear of. Uh, her colleagues in the civic society or in the democratic movement, but constant fear of the government of the day. All right, perhaps uh, to start wrapping up, um, I've just seen a tweet here from the new president of Malawi, Dr. Lazarus Chakwera, who said, I'd like to express my deep concern to the people of Zimbabwe. You deserve to be listened to. Hashtag Zimbabwean Lives Matter. Hashtag Free Zimbabwe. Hashtag Zimbabwe. This is now a head of state in, Zimb in Africa speaking out against uh, what's happening in the country. Do you think other heads of state really need to step up? People have been asking President Ramaphosa, for example, to uh, say something. Sure, uh, I totally agree with the, the position taken by President uh, Lazarus McCarthy uh, Chakwera. And I would want to quote uh, Martin Luther King when he said, in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends, of our friends. Is it the, the people of Zimbabwe have been suffering for quite a, 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 a while, and they deserve uh, to live in dignity. Uh, they are saying they are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They are saying enough is enough, and there is uh, a, an opportunity for regional leaders, including uh, President Cyril Matamila Ramaphosa, in his or capacity as the AU chairperson, and also in his official capacity as president of South Africa, a neighboring country, to act now and save lives in Zimbabwe. And when they say Zimbabwean lives matter, they, they do matter. And Zimbabwe is facing a, a dual uh, tragedy. There's COVID-19 virus, and there's also the human rights crisis virus in Zimbabwe. And I think it is time to uh, create a framework for Zimbabwe to enjoy uh, herself within the Committee of Nations for Zimbabwe to be respected. And for Zimbabwe to be respected, the government ought to first respect uh, its own citizens, respect its own laws and constitution, and uh, move forward. All right. Washington, Katema, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you very, very much indeed uh, for uh, that update and uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, your observations of the situation in Zimbabwe with us this evening. Thank you so much, uh, Peter.